Economic experts have been cooking up a spicy prediction stew and it's not looking too appetizing. Apparently, the economy is about to crash in 2023 due to a lethal combination of rampant inflation, wage stagnation, and economic slowdown. And let's not forget the recent financial institution collapse that has been like a warning shot fired at the global economy. But hold on to your hats, because this is not your typical recession. No, this one is going to be a real game changer. The money that was once locked up in the financial markets has broken free and is now wreaking havoc on everyday life, causing prices to soar to the skies. Now, I'm not saying it's time to panic and start hoarding cans of beans and bottled water just yet. But it's definitely time to start thinking about how to weather the storm. Experts are predicting that this recession could last around 7 years. Which is longer than the average lifespan of a hamster. So you need to start preparing for its macroeconomic impact. Investors need to pull out of risky ventures and secure their liquidity in something more stable. Like a bunker filled with gold bars. It's also a good idea to invest in assets that have historically recovered from recessions. Like alcohol. Joke aside, the best assets to invest in to shield yourself from the recession are sectors such as consumer staples, utilities, and healthcare. Stocks that have been paying a dividend for many years are also a good choice, as well as highly profitable companies. Bitcoin may also be an interesting choice, as it may provide a safe haven for investors, and may grow rapidly due to the instability of classic currencies such as the dollar and euro. Arguably, this economic downturn has started way back in 2020, when governments all over the world decided to unleash the money printers at full speed. Reversing the COVID crash was a clear indicator that will only end up delaying things for a few years, not steer away from the crunch. Click the link below for more insights from Tika Darius. This upcoming recession was probably jump-started by the Federal Reserve, which seems to have missed the memo about the dangers of procrastination, and clearly lacks visionary leaders. Instead of taking action when they first saw inflationary pressures building up in 2021, they decided to wait it out and hope for the best. But as we all know, hope is not a strategy, and it certainly didn't work in this case. Instead of raising interest rates in a timely manner, the Fed continued to pump money into the economy with its expansionary bond buying program. It's like they were trying to treat a fever with more blankets and hot soup. Instead of addressing the root cause of the problem. As a result, inflation continued to climb, and by the time they finally decided to raise interest rates, it was too little too late. The rapid increase in interest rates caused a chain reaction that led to the failure of many banks, including Silicon Valley Bank. It's like they were playing a game of Jenga with the economy, pulling out blocks one by one, hoping that the tower wouldn't collapse but when they finally pulled out the wrong block, the whole thing came crashing down. It's clear that the Fed made a grave mistake by ignoring the warning signs and acting irresponsibly. They should have prioritized price stability from the beginning, instead of waiting until it was too late. As Benjamin Franklin said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Let's hope that the Federal Reserve has learned its lesson and will prioritize responsible monetary policy in the future. Indeed, the Fed must take full responsibility for today's inflation problem. The Fed is also, at least partially, responsible for the bank failures that we see today. Although the specifics of why each bank failed are yet to be fully determined, the rapidly rising interest rates probably paid a large role. Click the link below for more insights from Michael Bussler. The recent banking crisis has imparted a valuable lesson. Don't fall for the attraction of low interest rates. Although it may seem like a great opportunity to enter the market, even the safest investments can crumble when inflation strikes hard. As supply chain issues and war create chaos, central banks must increase interest rates to regulate inflation, which proved disastrous for Silicon Valley Bank when they made a poor bet on interest rates, causing their collapse. Don't rely blindly on interest rate forecasts or assume that they will remain low indefinitely. Instead, anticipate market changes and study the annual reports of banks to understand where your money is being held. Investing during a low interest rate period can have both benefits and drawbacks. While it may appear to be a chance to earn quick profits, it also poses the risk of significant losses. The most important takeaway is to remain vigilant and not be fooled into believing that you are too smart to fail. 
Investing entails being prepared for the unexpected and making informed decisions. Learn from the current banking turmoil and remain sharp as an investor. Remember, the market is volatile, and anything can happen. Don't be caught off guard, and build resilient portfolios. What the bank did incorrectly was bet that interest rates were going to be low for a long time. As soon as the Federal Reserve increased interest rates, the value of SVB's treasury bonds fell because newer issued bonds will have a higher yield than the ones issued when interest rates were low. Click the link below for more insights from Jason Wynn. But maybe some investors don't want to take it easy in this recession, and instead exploit it to increase their wealth. For those investors, leverage is the answer. Leverage is the two-edged sword of the financial world. Can multiply profits and enhance gains. But also magnify risks and lead to catastrophic losses. This financial tool involves using borrowed money to invest in various financial instruments. Such as stocks, options, futures, and margin accounts. Leverage can grant access to expensive investments and increase profits. But it also comes with higher risks, additional fees, and complexities. Let's take a hypothetical example of a trader using leverage to invest in Intel stock to see how it works in action. By borrowing $14,000 from their broker and using 8x leverage, the trader invests $16,000 in total. With a surge in Intel stock price due to major government investment, the trader's investment value climbs to $18,513, netting them a profit of $2,513, or a 2.25x return on their original investment. However, the benefits of leverage come with equally significant risks. Amplified losses can exceed the initial capital investment, and leveraging requires careful consideration of its risks and rewards. Different types of financial leverage include margin accounts, options, futures, swaps, and loans from financial institutions. The example of Archegos Capital shows that excessive leverage can lead to financial ruin and cause chaos in the financial system. Understanding the concept of leverage is crucial in making informed financial decisions. While it can lead to substantial gains, it demands caution and careful analysis to avoid devastating losses as they say, with great power comes great responsibility and great potential. Financial leverage is a double-edged sword that can significantly enhance returns and profitability, amplify risks, and lead to significant losses. Understanding the concept of leverage and its implications is crucial for making informed financial decisions, whether you are trading stocks, investing in Forex, or taking out a leveraged loan. Click the link below for more insights from Art Invest. That's it for this week's DD Intel. Subscribe to our channel and see you next time. Thanks for watching.